solely Deo Gloria means to, to glory be to God alone. Let's stand and give Him all the glory.
Good morning, everyone. Good morning. And welcome to Kingsland Baptist Church. Uh, we're so glad to have everybody here this morning. Uh, some things uh, just briefly before the children uh, come here. Um, tonight, of course, the children will be uh, performing. Y'all please be seated. Always wanted a standing ovation, but yeah. Uh, again, uh, the children will be singing tonight, so y'all make sure you're here again tonight at 6.30, uh, primarily. Um, one of the things I'm up here for this morning is uh, one thing to welcome back Ed Faggart. Where is Ed? If he's here. All right. Well, Ed, again, has been in, has been in Greece. Ed is, there he is. Ed has been in Greece, and we're so, so glad to have him back. Uh, with us safely. Um, and uh, I know he's been on a lot of people's uh, prayer lists this week, uh, uh, and he's done some great work over in Greece. Uh, and I believe the flag that we have on the tree this morning, I believe is from Greece. He can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but uh, as, as you see, the flags we're doing this year on the tree as we get $500 uh, per uh, for, for uh, excuse me, for Lani, for any, get it, for Lottie Moon, uh, we'll be putting a flag on the tree. And of course, as you see, that's only one flag. So what does that mean? We only have a little over $500. We have $635. And some things I want you to look at this morning. One thing, we have a brochure, I think, out front. talks about who Lottie Moon is. Uh, also, this is the offering envelope that you'd like to put your money in for this year. And again, uh, but the main emphasis this week is the week of prayer. And that's what the missionaries out there really want us to focus on this week. Before you give, pray for them. Pray for their work overseas. And what they're emphasizing, of course, this year is Russia. And you'll see here in, in our bulletin, daily we have missionaries, real people, that you can pray for and their missionary work overseas. Uh, we also have some missionaries coming in the end of the month, I believe from Asia, and uh, we'll be meeting them. But again, this week, our emphasis should be on prayer. Um, the work out in the field that missionaries are doing overseas um, is so vital and so important in today's world uh, that we live in. Uh, so if everyone will bow their heads now, as I say, a prayer for, for those missionaries that we see in this bulletin, as well as all those uh, that we come to, 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 uh, to talk to about this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we lift up the names of those that have so much on our hearts that they might go out into the world, a fierce world, an uncertain world, Lord, but knowing that you are the way, Lord, to show others, to tell others about Jesus. Someone who can enter their heart, change their lives, and be their salvation. Lord, guide each and every one of them. And as we look to them this week during our devotions and during our prayer time, allow us to lift up these individual names and pray for their needs, Lord. Guide us now during this service in your heavenly name. Amen. You know, it's truly fantastic to see people come to the Lord and just seeing people be baptized. It's such a fantastic and wonderful thing. How glorious the Lord is and majestic is His name. Someone who died on the cross for our sins. Ladies and gentlemen, let's just stand and continue to worship and thank our God for dying for our sins. Oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is Your name.
At this time, uh, I'm hoping that my baby's going to show up here. <laughs> there he comes. David Marcello Fjordelis is walking down the aisle as we speak. He's being walked down the aisle as we speak. And I'm doing something this morning that I never uh, really thought about how to do. Um, and, but we're going to do it. And uh, we're going to dedicate David. So Jenny's got him. And um, my father-in-law and mother-in-law, Dr. Barkev and Polly Trachin are here. They're going to come up, and um, Alyssa's going to come up with them. Let me remind you uh, of the story in Samuel chapter 1 where Hannah desperately wanted a child. And uh, she was in bitterness of soul and prayed to the Lord and wept in anguish. Then she made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maidservant, remember me and not forget your maidservant, but will give your maidservant a male child, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life, and no razor shall come upon his head. And sure enough, God heard her prayer and answered. And um, in fact, in, in verse 27 of that passage, it says, For this child I prayed, and the Lord has granted me my petition, which I asked of him. Therefore I also have lent him to the Lord. As long as he lives, he shall be lent to the Lord, so that worship the Lord there. And of course, that's a classic passage when we dedicate our children. And uh, I've never dedicated one of my own. So this is new territory for me. Uh, I want to share with you something that the Lord gave me this morning in my, in my time of worship. 
from Psalm 96. Do you remember Psalm 96? We studied it last week, last Sunday morning and Sunday night. It says, oh, sing to the Lord a new song. We've done that today. We sang a new song today, as a matter of fact. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Bless His name. We just blessed His name. Tithes, offerings, and, and just giving the Lord the praise He deserves. Proclaim the good news of His salvation. I'm going to do that in just a second, once we're done with this. Declare His glory among the nations. And uh, boy, doesn't Lottie Moon fit into that. Declare the glory of God amongst, amongst the nations. That's a worthy cause that you just gave to. And then in verse 7 it says, Give to the Lord, or ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples, give to the Lord the glory and strength. Give to the Lord the glory due His name. Bring an offering and come into His courts. O worship the Lord in beauty in the beauty of His holiness. As I read that this morning, it just struck me that our children are a gift from God. And every week we give tithes and offerings and so forth. But at a day like this, what I am saying for my family is that we dedicate ourselves to raising Him in a Christian home. And we are dedicating Him to God. That means whatever God wants to do with Him, He can do. Now, He'll have to make that decision on His own someday to follow the Lord. And we understand that He'll make His own decisions. But today we dedicate ourselves and we dedicate our family and, um, to, to God's purposes. And we have our little thing here that maybe I'll let Grammy hold on to if you would. This is a little Bible that the preschool gives our, our families when they dedicate. And a little certificate for David Marcello Fiordelis. And uh, for any of my family watching on the internet, David Marcello Fiordelis. I don't want to offend the Italians. But that, his middle name is, is, after, is from my father, William Marcello Fiordelis. And uh, he's been a blessing. God gave him to us just about a year ago. His birthday's coming up. And um, he is a major, major blessing to our family. And I love him so much. I'm so thankful for him and John and Alyssa. And I'm very, very thankful for godly, godly grandparents. My, my parents couldn't be here today. They're in Iowa. And I couldn't fly in for this. But uh, Grammy and Grandpa Trachian did. And uh, I've asked Dr. Trachian um, if he would pray for us today. If he would pray our prayer of dedication. So would you uh, join us in prayer? And uh, Dr. Trachian, if, if you want to, if you pray close to me, my lapel will pick it up. How's that? If David doesn't get to it first. Let's put the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, this is a sacred moment for us. It's a special occasion for us, and it's a solemn occasion for us as we dedicate David Marcello, your beliefs, to you. Just like Hannah did, Lord, we come to you and to tell you that you are the creator of David, and you're the sustainer. And I pray that you will guide him and direct him. At an early age, we pray that he will accept the Lord as his Savior, Amen. and that he will follow your directions to glorify your name. But as we dedicate him, Lord, we dedicate ourselves as grandparents and parents, friends, and as a church to take care of our young people, Lord, because the devil wants to snatch them. Help us to be vigilant. Help us to be faithful. And as the Bible says, one generation will tell the other generation how great God is. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. Well, folks, we're spending a significant amount of time and energy and effort and focus this month on international missions. Today we're praying for them. And uh, every week we're giving to them. And uh, we are, are trying to do our part to reach this world for Christ. And uh, this morning I'm trying to make sure I don't trip over any wires. And it's kind of a, a maze up here. But uh, we, we are taking the offering every week. We're praying for our missionaries. I hope that you'll, you'll take your little bulletin insert and pray over those folks each and every day this week. And in fact, you'll have an opportunity during our invitation to make a commitment to praying mon today, starting for the, the, one, the ones in Russia, Mel and uh, Nancy, I think, praying for them today and then every day this week using this prayer guide. And, and um, I hope that you will pick up the church prayer guide in the back. You may not be able to come to prayer meeting, but every Wednesday night our prayer guide is placed out there for the whole week for you to use. And uh, we pray for missionaries each and every week. We have uh, certain focused missionaries, the uh, uh, D. Ray Davis family, Darren Davis family. Uh, we pray for them all the time. Robert and Donna Chapman, we pray for them every week. You'll remember Steve and uh, Raina White who lived in our, our uh, brick parsonage 
across the street over there. Um, we pray for them and, and Steve and Dawn. And, and uh, one family in particular that we pray for all the time is our sponsored family, the, pam- the family we have partnered with, the Kimbrough family. They are in Zambia, and it's Blake, Donna, Isabel, Abigail, and Isaac Kimbrough. We are praying for them because they're our sponsored family. We are focusing on them. We will lift them up each and every week. I want you to get to know them, and I want you to pray for them. And today, we have prepared another video for you because we want to introduce you to the Kimbroughs. These are our missionaries serving us. See, they're not people that just went... They're our missionaries. They're doing for us what we can't do right now. Today, none of us can get over to Africa and do what they're going to be doing in Africa today. So please pray for them. Please get to know them here through this video. And uh, we'll be talking a lot more about them in, in the days to come. The Kimbrough family. Come and see where the Lottie Moon Offering has taken us. We invite you to the northern province of Zambia to the Isoka District, where you will find Nika, Namwanga, Lambia, Tambuka, and many other people groups where there are little or no evangelical presence. Jesus said, Anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty again. But those who drink the water I give will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh, bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. I'm so thirsty, I can feel it, burning through the furthest corners of my soul. Deep desire, I can't describe this, nameless urge that drives me somewhere. Though I don't know where to go Seems I've heard about a river From someone who's been And they tell me once you reach it Oh, you'll never thirst again So I have to find the river Somehow my life depends on the river
the Kimbrough family. Blake, Danya, Isabel, Abigail, and Isaac. We are church planters in the northern province of Zambia. We're originally from Texas and have been in Zambia since October of 2006. We desire to see the true message of Jesus fill the northern province of Zambia. Thank you for giving to Lottie Moon. Thank you for giving to Lottie Moon. When you think about giving to Lottie Moon this year, think about the 5,000 plus Southern Baptist missionaries with families just like yours all over the world striving to fulfill the great commission that Jesus gave to all believers. When you think about Lottie Moon this year, think about how you will pray, give, and go. And I have a question to ask you folks that, that hopefully you're too spiritual to ask. You're too mature to ask a question like this, but I'm going to ask it. Some of you would be honest enough to, to think it. Maybe you were thinking this. Why on earth would that beautiful family go all the way to Africa and give up all the conveniences, all the comforts, all the, the pleasant comforts of home, all the stuff we get here that they don't get there? Why on earth would they do that? For that matter, why on earth would we dedicate our baby? Dedicate ourselves, but also dedicate our baby to the Lord. I mean, God could call him to go over to Africa. Would we really want that? Is that something, I mean, to spend his life over there with those people? Why are we even having a church service? I mean, why do we take all this time for this ritual of coming every Sunday and, and meeting together and, 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 and singing songs and reading verses? And Why do we do that? What's the point? Well, tonight, it's going to be dramatized in, in, in song, The Mystery of the Manger. I've entitled my sermon, The Mystery of the Manger, today. Turn over to Matthew chapter 1. And we're going to read about the mystery of the manger in a, a, a gospel account that doesn't even mention the word manger. But there are mysterious things that happen in this passage that really catch my attention, that I, I, want, to, I want to share with you today. And... Um, with, with the, the, the announcement of the coming of Christ, with the birth of Christ, with everything that goes around it, I'm excited about hearing what these kids have to say tonight about the mystery of the manger. This morning I'm going to highlight five areas in this little text we're going to read that, that seem just a little mysterious, a little strange to me. Are you there? Matthew chapter 1 verse 18 says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And, and she will bring forth a son, and you will call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and took him his wife. And, they did not, and he did not know her until she had brought forth her firstborn son, and, she, and they called his name Jesus. Do you ever get tired of hearing that story? I mean, isn't that a great story? I love that story. And I see some things in there that are, that are very strange. I think we've gotten so used to it, that, I mean, there's some supernatural stuff happening there. Here's number one. If you have your bulletin, take notes on the back. And we'll go quick, so write fast. In verse 18, we see that God chose a humble, ordinary couple to parent the Messiah. God chose a humble, ordinary, down-to-earth, probably middle to low income, probably on the low income, couple to parent Jesus, not a superstar couple like I would think, or a king, or a, a prince, or some wealthy million. No, just a lowly couple. And Jesus would end up being born in a barn, in a feeding trough. That's kind of mysterious to me. Why would God do that? And I'm not even going to offer an answer, really. Why would, I mean, why would God do that? Why did he choose? I mean, and think about the Kimbrough family. Ordinary people that God is using in an extraordinary way. I draw application from that. That God could use me, God could use you, ordinary folks, 
to do extraordinary things. Number two, in the, in the last part of verse 18, it says, She was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Now, I find this kind of strange, don't you? Don't think that happened anywhere else. Number two, God chose to supernaturally impregnate a virgin. Wow. That's an amazing thing. Now, they shouldn't have been incredibly surprised by this. If they had just read the prophecies, they would have known that was going to happen at some point. But God chose to supernaturally impregnate a virgin who was betrothed. She was engaged. Now, historically, the pledge to be uh, married was legally binding, this betrothal period. Uh, only a certificate of divorce could dissolve it. And uh, they, were, they were found themselves in a very strange situation. You see, the actual marriage, and this was a little different than the way do, we do it, but the actual marriage would take place later when, when the, 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 the groom would take the, the bride home with him. She, Mary very well could have been 13, 14 years old. And God chose her. And God did this amazing, mysterious thing. You know, there's just something mysterious about a pregnant woman anyway, isn't there? It's just a, a life within a life and, and all that goes along with that. Well, this was a supernatural pregnancy. In verse 19 and 20, we see a third one. Joseph chose to protect Mary's reputation. Joseph chose to protect Mary's reputation. See, he was a gentleman. He could have gone ballistic. And I'm sure he thought, what are you doing? What's happening? He could, I'm going to make her pay for what she's done. How did she end up pregnant? He could have had her stoned according to the Old Testament law. But yet he chose at first glance to be a gentleman and to do what he actually had to do by law. He had really no option. He had to put her away. He had to divorce her to dissolve the marriage before it even really got started. Look back at verse 19. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, an upright man, a godly man, not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. That was what he was planning on doing. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that wonderful? Isn't there a lesson to be learned there? Don't jump the conclusions. Don't immediately judge. You may not know all the facts. That man was a gentleman, and because of his disposition, he was already going to make a, a gracious decision. But then an angel appears to him, and everything changes. I find that mysterious. Number, number uh, four is in verse 21. God chose a child to save us. Now that's awesome. I just dedicated my baby. And I think about, what could God do with that little boy? He could do anything. What could God do with your kids and your grandkids? He could do anything. Look, look, at, uh, look back at verse 21. This is the key verse in the whole thing. And they will bring forth a son, and you will call his name Jesus, meaning Savior. For he will save his people from their sins. Now, how bizarre must this have sounded to Joseph, who's already trying to figure out in his head, oh my goodness, Mary's pregnant. They're going to think he's illegitimate. What's going to happen? What, what's, going to, what's going to happen to this poor child? How bizarre must it have been for him to hear the angel say, no, he was conceived of the Holy Spirit, and he's going to save his people from their sins. He will save his people from their sins. The angel is telling him that the baby will be a savior. This child that people will look down on and think what's going on and all these other... No, he's going to be the Savior. And um, the name Jesus was a popular name in first century Judaism. They were looking for a Savior. And Joseph would have been like any other of the Jews, hoping for the Messiah to come and, and to bring forth political revolution and, and knock off the Roman oppression. But even at this very, in the very first gospel, in the very first chapter, we see that the Messiah did not come initially for political reform or political freedom, salvation. He came to save people from their own sin. That's why Jesus came. And God, it's just mysterious to me. It's, it's, who would have ever thunk it? Who would have ever planned? Who would have ever dreamed that God would have done it this way? A baby in a manger. And 2,000 years later, people are still struggling with this, aren't they? You may be. A baby in a manger, born of, of the Holy Spirit in a union with Mary? How did that happen? That seems too fantastic. That seems incredible. It's reality. It's the truth. Number five, fifth mystery. Jesus chose to come and to fulfill prophecy. Look back at that passage. Let's read it again. Jesus chose to come and to fulfill prophecy. In verse 22, all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. And we know it's Isaiah. 
Isaiah 7, 14, you can write that down, look it up later. Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is being translated God with us. 700 years before this happened, the prophet prophesied that it would come. And God, of course, gave him that prophecy. And Jesus Christ being God, and, and who created the earth, in Colossians 1, Christ is given credit for that. You have this amazing situation where God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit have agreed to redeem humanity through the shed blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son. And it all starts in a manger in Bethlehem. That's an awesome story. That's fantastic. That's amazing. Why would, why would Jesus do that? Write down Philippians chapter 2. We don't have time to read it today. Philippians 2, 5 through 11. It talks about Christ being humbled and really being humiliated and emptying himself and becoming a man and becoming a servant and becoming obedient to death, even the death of the cross. He shed his blood, his God blood for us. Why? To save his people from their sins. It's an awesome story, isn't it? It's a powerful story. It's a life-changing story. And that is the mystery of the manger. The mystery of the manger is that Jesus Christ was born with a mission to save humanity. That's what it's all about. It's not just about having ushy gushies at Christmas and having a bunch of eggnog or whatever and opening presents. It's about the fact that God came to earth as a little child and grew up to be a man and died on a cross. Spilled his blood for you and for me. And you know, the Old Testament pointed toward this. Not just Isaiah 4, 7, 14, Isaiah 9, 6, and Genesis 3, 15. Very first book of the Bible, Genesis 3, 15. The, the, the serpent will, will bruise your heel, but you will crush his head. The serpent will, pru, will bruise the Messiah's heel, but the Messiah will crush his head. All the way back in, in Genesis, there's these messianic prophecies that point towards this, this deliverer, this anointed one. It was Jesus. It was Jesus. He was the, 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 the awaited Messiah. And uh, think about these soldiers that go to war. In our country now, think about it. A soldier doesn't, they're not, they're not drafted. They, they volunteer to go to war. And they know they're going to have to go through horrible training. And they know they could lose their lives. Think back into the old days. I went to the Alamo last summer. We, we visited the Alamo. And those men were there, hunkered down, knowing that to fight, they were going to die. They were going to give their lives. They knew it. They were honorable men fighting for freedom and independence. And think about our Savior, who knew what he was getting into before he ever stepped foot on this planet. He knew what he was getting into, but he did it anyway. He did it for you, and he did it for me. That's the mystery of the manger, that Jesus Christ was born on mission to save humanity. Jesus, meaning Savior, will save his people from their sins. Emmanuel tells you who Jesus was, God with us. Jesus, His name, tells you what He would do. He would save us. And today, in closing, I just want to offer two points of application. And here, very simple. Number one, Jesus Christ will save your soul. He will fix your life. He will put the broken pieces back together. Next weekend, we're going to have to tear all this stuff down because we're doing a baptism. Two baptisms. One for an adult and one for a child. In fact, we'll baptize you next weekend. Come and request it today and we'll do it. These are individuals who've given their heart to Christ. They've been saved. They've been born again. They realize Jesus Christ shed His blood for them. You could be an adult. You could be a child. You could be whoever. Jesus Christ will save your soul. He will come into your life and He'll save you. He'll do it right now. And then you too can take that first step of obedience like these ones are going to do and get baptized next Sunday morning. He'll save your family. He'll rescue your loved ones whose lives are fractured. He'll put them back together. I was so encouraged on Wednesday night that, that one of our, our, our sweet ladies, when we were going through the prayer list, said, oh, you need to take that name off the list. We have a whole list of family members and friends that we're praying for to come to Christ. No, no, you need to take them off the list. They got saved. Then we crossed that name off. Baptized them a few weeks ago. They're members of our church. That's an awesome thing. And God will save your family. He will rent whatever your problem is. Whatever you're dealing with, especially Christians, especially here, you gave your heart to Jesus. You've trusted your whole eternal destiny to Him. Don't you think He can handle your checkbook? Don't you think He can handle your problems with your kids and at home and at school and whatever? He will take care of you. He alone can take care of you. He alone is Savior. There is no other Savior. There is no other God. So that's point of application number one. Give your heart to Jesus. If you've given your heart to Jesus, accept the, accept the whole deal. Don't just go halfway. Give Him every part of your life. He will rescue you. 
No matter what you're going through, he'll rescue you. Now here's number two. Because he saved us, oh, we should, we should express our gratitude by living for him. Because he's done this in our lives, we should express our gratitude by living for him. We should express our gratitude here by sharing our story with others. Now you can share your story everywhere you go to anyone who'll listen to it. Your story, it's personal. God saved you, Christian. He's living in your life. It's a unique, there was a unique point in time in your life when you gave your heart to Jesus. You have a personal story. Share it to anyone who will listen to it. Everywhere you go. And where you can't go, then you have to support somebody like the Kimbros to go for you, to support them by prayer this week, to support them financially, to take on their mission. Listen, to take on their mission as if it were your own. To, to, to personalize this thing and to realize these aren't just people that are over in Africa, in Australia. And, and the focus this year with Lottie Moon International Offering is really for um, Eastern Europe, the former Soviet Union. I've been there. I can tell you, it's cold. It's a, it's a strange place to be. Our missionaries have a hard, hard assignment over there in Moscow. We'll be praying for them this week. Lift them up. Pray that God will do things through them, and, and, and especially with these, these ones that we've partnered with, that they'll understand we're not just people praying from, for them from afar. No, no. We're family members. We love them. We know them. We know about their kids. We'll send them care packages. We'll send them emails. We're going to get involved in their lives personally, and one day we're going to go over there and see them and minister with them. So what, what, what do we do with this salvation message? His name is Jesus. He's the Savior. He came to save His people from their sins. Well, you have to admit you're a sinner. You have to admit you, you have a need for Christ. And He'll save you today. Today. And forget about all the church labels, all the, all the Christi, Christianity or Christianiosity, the religiosity, whatever word I'm looking for there. Forget about, about all that. Do you have a personal relationship with Christ today? Have your sins been forgiven? I don't care where you go to church. I don't care where you, whether your parents went to church. And that's great if they did. I guess I should care about that. But it makes no difference. Remember the little saying, God doesn't have any grandchildren? He just has children. You're either his child or you're not. And it happens when you, when you lay it all on the altar, when you confess your sin, confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, that God raised him from the dead, believing in your heart that God raised him from the dead, born of a virgin, God in human flesh. And if he's done that in your life, I would challenge you today as we go to our time of invitation. Would you make a commitment to pray for these people this week? It's a simple commitment. Yes or no, I promise to pray through this little prayer list. I promise to pray through that little prayer guide every day, seven days, to pray for our missionaries to take it personally. And if you need God to rescue your soul today, maybe you have a friend or family member that you're just burdened about. Maybe you have a burden in your life that you just need to lay down at the altar. Think Christmas is coming and, and you've got a whole lot more bills than you have money. And you're not sure what you're going to do for your kids. I don't know what you're burning. Maybe you had a bad doctor's report this week. Maybe you have an issue with a, a child. Maybe you have a burden in your heart that nobody else knows about. That's why he came. To save you. To save your soul. And to intervene in that situation. And to prove to you that he is who he said he was. God with us. He can handle it. I ask you to start off with, and I'll finish with this. Why in the world would the Kimbros go over there? Why in the world would we dedicate our baby knowing that, that, that he could get sent over there? Why would we even do this service? because of the mystery of the manger. That's why. It's because of the mystery of the manger. Jesus Christ was sent on mission to save humanity. That's what our lives should focus around. That's what it's all about. That's why we do what we do. And he did it for his own glory, by the way. When you read Philippians 2, 5 through 11, he has a name above every other name. He's exalted above all others. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Make no mistake about it. He did it for his own glory. And he did it because he loves you. And he loves me. And he loves everyone we know. He loves all of us. He did it to save us. To make that possible. Would you pray with me? Lord God, I pray that you would move in our time of invitation. Thank you for the videos. Thank you for the music. Thank you for the children. Lord, I thank you for my little baby David. I love him so much. And Lord, I'm scared when I think about the world he's going to grow up in. What's it going to be like? I just don't know. I'm burdened. I pray, dear God, that you give me courage. I pray that you give us all courage to stand up for what we believe in. And there's nothing more central to what we believe in than that manger. God in human flesh coming to save us from our sins. Lord, I pray that you would move mightily in our time of invitation. 
Lord, I pray that our people would commit to praying for these missionaries this week. That our people would then go to the next level and write big checks to support them in a big time way to meet this $25,000 huge goal to support just a one time international offering. Lord, there's going to be other offerings. There's opportunities every week to give. But Lord, this international Lottie Moon offering, Lord, I pray that we would meet our goal. That our people would take it seriously and personally and they'd get involved. Not our will, but thine be done in this place, especially during this time right now. And Lord, I pray for that one that does not yet know you, that he or she would give their heart to Christ today. With our heads bowed and our eyes closed, I want to I acknowledge you, sir, ma'am. If the Holy Spirit's knocking on your heart's door and today is your day to give your heart to Jesus, I would encourage you right now to do that. I can't make you do it. I can't talk you into it. And I'm not trying to. Only the, only the Father draws you through the power of the Holy Spirit to Himself. Jesus Christ did live that perfect life. He did what none of us could do. His blood was pure, pre- precious blood. So when He shed His blood, it covered our sins. And all you have to do is claim it. All you have to do is make it personal. Give your heart to Jesus today. Repent of your sin. Invite Him into your life right now. And if you're doing that and you want to come forward and pray with me, if you've done that recently and you want to come and request baptism, great. If you want to come and and request membership in our church, that's great. But none of those things will save you. The only thing that's going to save you is for you to repent and for you to believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I encourage you to do that today. You can do that where you're seated. You can do that during the invitation. You can pray with me if you'd like. Christian, let me ask you this. I don't want to put anybody on the spot. Our heads bowed, our eyes are closed. I just want to make a testimony, and I want you to make a testimony in your heart before God. If you today will make a commitment to pray every day this week for these missionaries, that means you're going to have to put it on the bulletin board or the fridge or something, because if you're like me, you'll forget. You'll forget you even did this. You've got to write it down somewhere. But if you're willing to make that commitment with our heads bowed and our eyes closed, I don't want to put people on the spot, but Christian, if you're willing to pray this week for these missionaries, it's so important that I want to give you an opportunity during this invitation right now with raised hand to make that commitment. If you're going to make that commitment, raise your hand right now. God in heaven, I pray that you'd bless these ones who are making the commitment to pray for these missionaries. I pray that they would go forward with it, that they would do it. And Lord, I pray for those who have burdens on their heart that need to lay them at the altar, that they would come during our invitation and do that. Others who need to join our church, request baptism. Lord, I pray that our folks would come and do business with you. And Lord, if there's one that does not yet know you, that wants freedom, that wants to be saved, Lord, I pray they would come right now and talk with me and they can have their sins forgiven today everything the mystery of the manger all of it for them right now it's in Christ's name we pray amen would you stand with me we're going to sing the altar's open for anyone who wants to pray if you have a burden lay it down at the altar if you want someone to pray with you come I'll pray with you if you're a lady we'll have a lady pray with you a man I'll pray with you come now during our time of invitation as God leads